Hello everybody, we're going to talk about event management. And uh, event management is one of those topics where it's tough to feel like you have a full grip on things. On one hand, at times you'll feel like you're spot on with your understanding, feel like you can do most anything you want with the patient on the vent, but since it's not common to have to make multiple adjustments in the ED setting, you often feel a little bit like Donnie in the Big Lebowski. Yeah, Donnie, you're out of your element. Event management obviously is a pretty massive topic, however, so we're really not going to talk about the whole thing. We're just going to talk about one little chunk of it, and as you very well may have guessed by our friends in the corner, we're talking about PEEP today. The first things we're going to talk about are just sort of the basics. What is PEEP? Why do we use it? What are the potential negative effects of it? That sort of thing. First off, let's talk about what exactly is PEEP. Well, it is not 5 in all patients in all times, right? So we can't use that same value just willy-nilly on everybody. PEEP is positive end expiratory pressure, all right? It's a pressure that is within the airways during the exhalation phase of a ventilatory cycle. Now, the pressure can be set by you, in which case it's referred to as extrinsic PEEP, or it can be developed by the patient under certain situations, and in that way it's called intrinsic PEEP, or auto peep. So let's look at why you would really want to use peep. Uh, so see a little diagram here of what happens when there's no peep present. So we see alveoli closed and then alveoli open. And with inspiration and expiration, there's this repeated opening and closing of the alveoli, which can lead to ventilator-induced lung injury because of damage to the membranes and that repeated opening and closing mechanism. The other thing you get when you add PEEP is that by opening up these airways and getting a little bit better recruitment, you actually get better matching. So uh, obviously blood in the lung flows to areas that are well ventilated and well oxygenated, and it flows away from areas that are not oxygenated. Uh, so this is where you get your improved oxygenation with PEEP as you have better uh, matching of your ventilation and perfusion, and you avoid uh, the physiologic shunting that it can occur without PEEP. So we all know that the application of PEEP is not really without its consequences, right? We've all put that one patient on positive pressure and seen them get hypotensive. So let's take a look, little bit of a look at the physiologic changes that occur once we add on positive pressure ventilation to a patient. So here is our venous return line uh, plotted against our cardiac output line, or startling curve. And uh, this is the normal state here. And you can see where the two of those intersect, that is what the patient's cardiac output is. And so uh, in the application of positive pressure, we have an increase of right ventricular afterload, so a downward shift of the starling curve. And we also have a change in the resistance of the intrathoracic vessels, uh, so there's a change in the slope of the venous return curve. Now, if the patient's endogenous catecholamines kind of take over, or there's an application of some external volume, um, you give the patient a bolus of fluids, uh, you will actually will shift that line over, uh, and you can nearly normalize uh, their, their cardiac output uh, in that sort of setting. However, if you have really high PEEP in a patient, you have a very big shift in your starling curve. Or if you have a very volume-depleted patient, uh, you're going to have a pretty significant drop off of cardiac output and then likely subsequent hypotension. As you hear that the, the change there is it's much greater than uh, the change here. So the situations where you want to avoid high PEEP are going to be uh, in those patients who are significantly volume depleted. Now let's look at some situations where you may be forced to use high PEEP. You know, we can't always just use low PEEP values on patients and we often need to increase it to uh, you know, better our, our ventilation per and matching and, and improve our oxygenations. And that's usually actually in, in patients with, with pulmonary edema. Um, and that can be cardiogenic or, or non-cardiogenic. Um, and all the increased uh, pressure from the pulmonary edema can lend to alveolar collapse, which means that uh, higher peak values are needed to uh, counteract that pressure and to, to keep the uh, alveoli open and, and improve recruitment. Um, you know, you'll note that, however, that's, uh, that's a, a diffuse lung process that affects everything. And so sort of the, the blunt application of high PEEP can improve recruitment essentially everywhere. Whereas in processes that are more focal, uh, like pneumonia, um, the application of high PEEP there won't necessarily lead to increased recruitment, but uh, that extra pressure will drive volume over into the unaffected lungs uh, and could potentially cause some ventilator-induced lung injury. So now we're going to talk about auto PEEP, or intrinsic PEEP, or occult PEEP. 
or dynamic hyperinflation, whatever you want to call it. Basically, it's positive pressure in the alveoli at the end of expiration that hasn't been applied by you. It can have a lot of negative cardiovascular effects, as we saw with high levels of PEEP. You can have decreased cardiac output. You can have hyperinflation, alveolar rupture. It increases work of breathing because it increases the pressure the patient needs to generate in order to actually trigger a spontaneous breath on the ventilator. Um, and the hyperinflation of lungs means that increased pressures are going to be needed to deliver the same tidal volume, uh, effectively creating some ventilatory dead space. Now, we mentioned that auto peep can develop in patients who have inadequate expiration. And so you can see here on our flow diagrams uh, that you'll notice on the ventilator that the patient on these last two breaths actually didn't have a complete exhalation. And so what that means is that there's a small amount of volume slowly building up, as you can see by this volume over time curve, and leading to hyperinflation and leading to increased pressures. And so that's going to be evidence that intrinsic PEEP may be developing. Now the other thing you can look at to know whether or not you have some auto PEEP developing is peak inspiratory pressure. Now if you apply extrinsic PEEP, and the patient's peak inspiratory pressures don't increase, then they likely have auto peep present. Then you can subsequently do an expiratory hold maneuver and characterize exactly what that auto peep pressure is, and you can use that to help adjust your vent settings. Now that we really know how auto peep develops, mostly through air trapping, what are some of the things that we can do to help prevent it? So here's our flow diagram again. You can see there that the patient's expiratory phase doesn't come all the way to baseline. So what are we going to do about that? Well, one of the things we can do about it is we can just decrease respiratory rate. We can do that by setting, the, setting it on the vent, or we can increase sedation in the patient, and that will hopefully decrease respiratory rate as well. Um, that will provide more exhalatory time. The other thing is you can decrease your inspiratory time or increase your inspiratory flow rate, and that way uh, the same volume is delivered over a shorter period of time, allowing more time during the exhalation phase. The final thing you can do is you can actually just decrease tidal volume. So if you have a smaller tidal volume going in, you obviously have a smaller tidal volume going out, and a patient who has some obstructive physiology is likely to be able to exhale all that volume that you deliver. So those are the three things you can do. Decrease respiratory rate, decrease inspiratory time, and decrease tidal volumes. Now, what about the patient who has some auto peep present? Now you've done everything you can to make sure they're exhaling as much as possible, and and you've decreased their air trapping as much as possible. But what happens when you add PEEP to that patient? Now, it may be intuitive, and you may think that, well, if I add PEEP to them, their pressures are going to increase, and that's just craziness. You shouldn't do that. Well, maybe they'll increase, maybe they won't. There was a study in critical care medicine several years ago by Carmez et al. who looked at uh, applying varying levels of PEEP to patients with obstructive lung physiology, and basically they would apply PEEP in increments of two from zero up to 150 percent of what the patient's intrinsic PEEP was. Um, they found three different types of responses that the patients had. Response C is the one that may seem intuitive to some people where as you apply continually increasing levels of PEEP, the patient's plateau pressures and their auto PEEP levels all increased while their functional residual capacity would decrease in a stepwise fashion. In column B there, you see, however, a different response, what they term a biphasic response, where there's essentially no change in plateau pressures or auto peep until they applied a little bit more than 100% of their auto peep. So if you apply extrinsic peep at 80%, 60%, uh, of what the patient's auto peep is, there'll be no change in plateau pressures. In patient A, there's actually a biphasic response where they saw a decrease in plateau pressures and a decrease of auto peep levels up to a point of approximately 80 to 100 percent of intrinsic peep levels. So from this, there's a thought that adding peep in the very least likely doesn't result in a great increase of your plateau pressures until you get to about 80 to 100 percent of your intrinsic PEEP level. And there's a potential that by adding PEEP to a patient who already has intrinsic PEEP present, you may actually decrease their plateau pressures and you may actually decrease their auto PEEP levels. Well, that does it for me. Uh, hopefully I've managed to give you a little bit more of an in-depth understanding of the use of PEEP in mechanical ventilation. And if you want to do some more reading on the topic, here's some good references you might find of use.